Garrett here from Garden First Cannabis. I'm a grower, a music junkie, and an avid outdoorsman. I'm always looking for new ways to better myself and my garden. Join me as we go behind the scenes to meet the incredible people behind today's most successful cannabis brands and hear the stories of their journey. This is Deep Roots. Watermelon gazpacho, yeah. and you have white fish, pate, and dill. All right. Oh, oh, right. Thank you. Pure Options family, thank you for having me. I'm excited to meet you guys. Check out the facility. Let's uh, enjoy this beautiful meal. Yes. Yeah, Salute. Thank, you. thank you for coming. <laughs> Damn. That's delicious. It's amazing to see. I mean, clearly where you've come in your life, but. I imagine that your career in the cannabis industry didn't start with a beautiful lake house like this. No, it did not. <laughs> uh, really far from it, to be honest. I guess it all dates back to, I think I was 14. I was always cool with like the cool kids and I was always cool with the kids that got in trouble. I was always that conduit because I was friends with the bad kids. The cool kids, they wanted some, so they asked me and I was like, oh yeah, of course I can get it. And um, so I bought my first ounce for $280. I turned around and sold it for 350. To make 70 bucks when you're 14, that was a lot of money. <laughs> Hell yeah. um, that was a lot of money. I, uh, I graduated from Michigan State back in 2005. I had a short stint in corporate America and it just wasn't for me. One of my best friends had sent me a 300 page business plan for a business out in Colorado. And so I literally read every single word and I was like, wow, I get to sell weed legally? Like, I really get to do this. So I dropped everything I was doing then. I liquidated what I had. I invested out in Colorado. I just thought that I'd rather be a, a big fish in a smaller pond than you know a small fish in a big pond out there because everybody had already been doing it for so long. Right. Um, it was new, it was riskier. I kind of like, you know, I have a, I have a high risk profile. Michigan, the, you know, the ROI was, was a lot better. So yeah. I just was on. You guys had like $4,000, $5,000 pounds for a while there, right? Oh, we, yeah, we did. That must be yeah. nice, man. Yeah. While you were getting that, I was getting 900 <laughs> <laughs> pound in Oregon, it was fucking rad, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I stayed on that 4,800 tip for a while, so. Yeah, what a life. We started with nothing, I mean, we really did. I mean, I started with $6,800, $6,856. So I round up to 7,000, because I think it sounds a little bit better, but, right. you know, quite honestly, that's, that's, that's what I started with. What was interesting to me is that we, there's still such a strong medical side here. Uh, it seems like REC hasn't fully transitioned. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, you know, our original medical marijuana ballot initiative had passed in 2008 that was the creation of the caregiver system. And we did not have fully state licensed businesses. They were, the businesses were operating um, on local approval, sometimes by ordinance, sometimes by a friendly mayor. That's when we, uh, you know, uh, started lobbying and, you know, uh, built a whole grassroots coalition and um, got everybody to work together to support um, licensing of medical facilities. And a big reason why, um, you know, we worked so hard on that is because people were getting raided all over the right. state. And it was, you know, it was a serious drug war that was yeah. happening. They were throwing- It was a culture war more than It was, anything, yeah. and they were throwing, you know, um, flash grenades and smoke grenades. You know, it took us uh, six, seven years to pass the Medical Marijuana um, Facilities Licensing Act. And during that time, we also um, had to re-legalize uh, marijuana-infused products because the Supreme Court had ruled, you know, that only uh, smokable cannabis was okay. 
There's a lot of pressure right now to like shut down the entire caregiver scene as a whole, right? Yeah, and these assholes are trying to do it. So, and um, you know, that's not cool. I mean, the caregivers are the backbone of this industry. And there's a lot of backlash from caregivers right now uh, to a lot of businesses that are out there. And, you know, rightfully so, because a lot of these businesses, they didn't do anything for the industry. They just cherry picked this investment. And, um, you know, and so, you know, we've always supported caregivers. I mean, we were caregivers. Right. I'm excited. I'm really excited to come check out the facility. Um, that's my favorite part of this whole experience, other than, you know, the lake houses and the cheese platters and all that shit. But uh, just getting to nerd out and learn from you guys and, and share. Thank you for having me, man. I gotta say, this is easily the cleanest, shiniest bedroom I've ever been in. I know you were saying you have a, a, your propagation is actually at a separate facility than your veg. Yeah, we have 83 strains total, so it's super important for us to isolate the moms and the clones from a separate building because obviously right. with flowering plants, you got all the extra pest pressures. So you're saying you guys are running 83 strains. I mean, that's a heck of a lot. I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what breeders do you guys work with? Do you do in-house in breeding or you know, how did you come to that selection? Our favorite breeder personally, someone we work with the most is Fletcher from Archive. Right. I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah, right out in Portland. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got so many sweet strains. We run a lot of his gear, honestly, the rocket fuel we got gelato dosi secret formula which is white fire crossed with dosi i mean he's got right. all the dosi crosses are all crazy but some breeders cuts of the moonbow 112 his rainbow belts plants look super healthy not seeing any deficiencies in here super green everything's growing really fast uh what new to you running tried and true gh man we use the flora series three part so it's been around, I think, for 40 some years. It was hard not to go with it. So we've used probably every nutrient brand in the books and it's simple, you know, three parts. It's, it's cut and dry. You got the micro, the grow and the bloom and it's easy to teach people. So it's always been tried and true. The parts are super stable because they're separated. And right. So with the GH3 part, how are you evolving your recipes throughout the course of the cycle? All your nitrogen and iron is in the micro, obviously. So given that one during veg in the early stretch, um, as you transition in, you'll start getting more of the grow in there. That gives the plants the phosphorus they need to start forming bud sites and bulking up. So, and then uh, the bloom will get pushed in at the end. Um, that gives you all your potassium that you need to finish cannabis. So it seems like a lot of grows these days are transitioning to the LEDs, particularly in veg, uh, but I imagine that comes with some kind of adjustments to maintain the environment. If you're not running high intensity lighting that, that has a lot of heat, you're not running as much cooling. Yep. Um, so how do you counterbalance all that? And we went with the Quest 506s in here. I've been running Quest 155s since I've been in the caregiver market. Right. Always loved them, tried and true. So when they came out with the 506, that new patented technology, we it was an easy choice to hop right on. Well, no, we were stoked when the 506s came out. We had been running a bunch of 225s, but that new coil technology basically with only a fraction more in amperage draw, you're getting almost twice as much dehumidification out of it, which is it's super impressive. Yeah, the savings are huge. I mean, we've experienced that with the old models as well. Quest and Hawthorne have been great. Yeah, so you guys seem to have a lot of stuff dialed in this room, uh, but I know you were saying that there's an expansion coming. How big is that space gonna be? And uh, what's the biggest thing that you wanna fix and do better with that next one? So we're just lacking square footage. Obviously the propagation facility is separate. So we need more space for our moms. We're gonna start doing tissue culture over there, clean up the stock of all the OGs we've been running for a long time, make sure everything's clean. Well, thank you so much, Jake. I'm excited to go check out the flower rooms. If, it's, uh, if the bedroom is any uh, reflection of what we're gonna see over there, uh, it's gonna be really beautiful. Thanks. What's up, Ryan? How's it going, How's it going man? man? You're like the 10th Ryan I've met today, I think. Uh, what do they actually call you around here? So I go by Aho because there's about 10 of us. Where were you in the line of Ryans? How long have you been on with the Peer Options team? So I think I was like the third Ryan that pops on, first one on the Grow team, so I've got that going for me, but they still don't let me keep my name. <laughs> um, and I got here in March of last year, okay. um, so like right when the, everything locked down, which was fun to have a place to at least spend time. Right. Um, but yeah, basically came over here, uh, was one 
one of the first eight people to like kind of have this grow and like all the thousand lights in here, we kind of set that up, ran the first runs, learned a lot of lessons. I feel super grateful that we were able to still be able to work and be considered essential. I mean, the, the progression we've had as an industry from 10 years ago being taboo to now being considered an essential business during a pandemic, it's, yeah. it's kind of mind blowing. The knowledge base is clear here. This canopy in this room is super even. This is a flower room, but it doesn't look like we're in flower. Are you about to flip these things? How does the, the process work of moving from veg to in here? Yeah, so um, we have our pro veg, our veg area that we just saw, um, kind of brought the plants down here. Um, we do a transplant into three gallons and then we kind of have them set up here for about a week um, before we foot transition into flower. Um, with these Gavita 1930s, we're seeing a lot more vigorous vegetative growth, just having that full spectrum, um, right. getting those greens and those blues early on has allowed us to actually speed up our flip time. So I think these are in here about five days before we're flipping. One thing I'm noticing about these 1930s, and I've been starting to see them everywhere as of late, the spectrum, it's, it's pure white. It's less wattage overall than a DE. About 20%. So the, that was the big thing that drew us to these uh, Gavita 1930s is the ability to have the 1930 umoles per second, um, or that that's what your par is at the uh, at the canopy level. Right. Getting that while using 20% less power, um, you're able to actually retrofit to those 1,000 watt double ended um, one for one replacement. Are you getting the same yields? Are you getting the same stretch? Like, what's the difference in growth structure as we move through flower? The difference in the bud set at day 24. Um, it looked like, I mean, it was day 33. I mean, it's, it, it's phenomenal how much more you're able to produce. So it looks like you got some kind of movable bench system um, or else we wouldn't be able to get anywhere in this room. But uh, what, what do you got set up here to, to, to hold all these plants? So we're using the Botanicare sliding benches. Um, these are able to be actually moved um, around so you're able to hit every angle of the plant. We have 162 plants on each table. That's a lot of weight. We're not seeing any of that cracking or anything like that you'd find with traditional benches. So these Botanicare rolling benches, basically as you design a room, you can pick whatever distance, whatever length you want and exactly. uh, just custom fit it to your, your room. Right, so as we're expanding, we're finding that we don't necessarily have to use this size for the, right. the new expansions that we're finding, but being able to customize that to whatever you need has been great. So there's uh, a lot of rolling benches on the market. Uh, what made you guys decide to go with uh, these botanic air sliding ones? Uh, with these particularly, it's just having that heavy gauge ABS tray. It allows for having that thermal strength and thickness that prevents any of that cracking, bowing, or leaking um, that you'll see with a lot of those others. Right. Well, uh, again, Ryan, it was great meeting you. Ryan number three, I appreciate your time and showing me around. Uh, I'm gonna go head, head back over to meet up with Jake and check out a room that's a little further along. Enjoy. Thanks, man. Jake, I just got done with Aho in the other room. Yep. Um, I gotta say, it seems like everybody on your team is super knowledgeable, uh, really composed, um, and it's impressive to see, especially you know him coming on just over a year ago uh, to be as comfortable and, uh, and knowledgeable as he is. Uh, it's impressive, so it's, it's a testament to the way you've been able to train people around here. We appreciate that. But uh, this room, we're getting a little closer to finish than that one over there. Oh yeah. Uh, what do we got rocking in this room? So we got some rocket fuel here. You see where we are, late flower. I think probably about two weeks out from chop now. Um, this is actually one of Fletcher's archive strains right here. Nice. So you can smell that sharp gas in the air. The aroma's nice Petroleum, and Petroleum, dude. So to mitigate odors in the room, we got the can filters up here, carbon scrubbers. Right. So we got the Q-Max 12 fans. So pushing about 1700 CFM per fan head. Keeps the noise down in here, which is really nice. Among all the other chatter and, and just vibrations throughout the room, that's not something that's adding in the acoustics. So we got the Michigan Regulatory Association. It's actually one of our neighbors, so it's really important to us to stay courteous, right. make sure we're keeping the smells in these rooms. This carbon filter specifically has one of the thickest carbon beds out on the market. It's able to trap a lot of those volatile organic compounds, VOCs, just going around in the air. So we've always, you know, drifted towards this as a result. Also, the can fan is just known for 
for having one of the lowest pressure drops. So just overall, we're happy with how it, how it treats our air, how it treats our cannabis and the cleanliness it provides. You guys have 83 cuts. You said you're running about 15 or 20 at a time as part of the normal rotation. Sure. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of those are what the sales guys want or what the stores want. Uh, but as a grower, what's your favorite strain uh, that you get to work on here? The Moomba 112 cut that we got from Fletcher, the archive, that's a breeder's cut of the Moomba. It is easily, has one of the best noses. It's like peppery and thick, super weird. So, but funky on top of that. Um, and then also I like, uh, we have a Borello is what we call our gelato dosi cut. Nice. So that one's super leggy. That leggy trait seems to give a lot of gas off, but man, that one's primo. I heard earlier that you guys are actually hand trimming all of that. I want to go check that out and see how you're able to manage 200 pounds a week uh, of, of top shelf hand trim flour. Let's do it. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for yeah. being here, man. Yeah, so we are in uh, your guys's, or one of your several drying rooms in the facility, right? Yes, sir. So when it comes uh, out, of the, out of the flower rooms and into here, uh, walk me through the harvest process and the parameters you guys are looking for. So from harvest, it then goes into our hands and making sure that we have that product ready to go to the customer at the highest quality. Starting with the conditions that are in the room, making sure that once we harvest, we put the flower in a condition and uh, environment that is as perfect as possible for it to cure to get the best results possible. So making sure that our rooms are clean to begin with by checking the filtration system, by checking to make sure that everything has been cleaned, rubbed down, that there's no issues whatsoever is imperative to what we're doing. So what are those temperature humidity parameters and, and how long are you running, uh, running a dry cycle before it makes it over to the trim room? So typically we like to curate for 14 days. Uh, now that's gonna be specific on the strain, right? Every type of strain is a little bit different. Typically we like to, to be in there for 14 days. Um, when we first harvest, the humidity in the room is rather high, so we don't add any humidity to the room. We wanna take as much of that moisture out of the product as possible. And at that point, about seven days in, we start to add humidity back back into the room. The reason we're doing that is because the plant isn't releasing as much moisture and we don't want it to dry out so much. When we get to the 14 days, we're typically at 60% humidity, not more than that. It can fluctuate from 55 to 60, depending on the plant. Uh, and we don't ever want to exceed 60 degrees. Typically we're right around 59 degrees. Because they're pulling down I was hearing on average like 200 pounds a week. You know, how many people does it take and what's the process of getting it from you know, dried, cured stuff on the vine to trimmed, bag, packaged, whatever else? Uh, it's a pretty in-depth process. Uh, it starts with curing it to where we want it to be. Uh, from there, we debut it. Once we debut it, we sort out the nugs to make sure that we're trimming the ones that we really want to. So we focus on our large nugs, our medium nugs, and our smaller nugs. We trim those down. Uh, once they're trimmed, uh, they then go into our vault. Inside of our vault, they will be vacuum sealed, not too tightly, but enough to take most of the air out of it. And then they're kept in a, a very cold climate to preserve that product. How many trimmers does it take to get that much weed trimmed? So we have uh, 35 trimmers per shift. We have three shifts. So you're talking about 115 trimmers. Uh, in, in a single day, 115 trimmers. Working around the clock. Yep. Yeah. Woo. How much of your stuff is going out in, you know, in pound bags for deli style and how much of it is getting prepacked in house? You know, at the moment, most of it is going out for um, deli style in pounds or two pound bags. We've done a little bit of pre-packaging, mostly for our own uh, retail facilities. We anticipate that need increasing here quite a bit. Eventually, the goal is for almost all of it to go that way, unless, you know, our, our, our client is demanding it. Well, sweet. Thank you guys for showing me around. Um, let's go check out that, uh, that freezer you got where everything's stored. You can step awesome. into the freezer, yeah. man. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, thank you again for this sweatshirt, because uh, this is this room is no joke. Uh, how cold are you actually keeping it in here? So we keep it right around 40 degrees. We found that that's a great way to preserve the, the product. Uh, we also keep the humidity down in here. Everything is systematic on how cold we keep it compared to humidity. And we constantly are checking in here on the product uh, with our moisture readers to make sure that there isn't any drying and we can adjust accordingly. I understand you brought a friend over here who's uh, not exactly part of the team, but uh, kind of an affiliate. Yeah, so this is uh, Brett. He's from Driven Grow. We've we partnered with Driven Grow and we send them our trim for cured concentrates and, and cured resin carts. And we also send them fresh frozen for our live resin carts and live resin concentrates. Driven Grow and Pure Options have had a working relationship for seven or eight years now. And most recently, as Patrick said, we've been doing a lot of processing for them. How are you processing all of their trim that they send over to you? It's a hydro carbon extraction with butane. Well, thank you guys again so much for having me. It was great meeting you. Yeah, thanks again. Appreciate Catch it. Catch you around. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Brett. Nice meeting you. How's it going, bud? Good. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. I'm Garrett. Ryan. Nice to meet you. Absolute pleasure. So uh, we're at the House of Dank, right? Is this a medical or rec dispensary? So this is a medical dispensary. As far as recreational, the whole city of Traverse City is still going to be medicinal only. Okay. Um, we're hoping that ends by the end of this year. Although we have been working very diligently with other dispensaries in the area just to kind of get a bad flavor out of anybody's mouth in the area, local business owners, why they should be supporting us, why we would benefit them, things along the lines of that. Yeah, it's interesting to see the Michigan market. You guys went rec, what, a little over a year ago and uh, there still seems like a lot of holdouts. How long have you been working here for, for House of Dank? So I personally have been with House of Dank for the past year. I started here as a bud tender last July when we first opened in Traverse City, of course. I moved my way up to assistant manager after about two months, I would say. And uh, six months after we opened, I started as GM up here. Nice, dude, grind your way to the top, that's awesome. Thank you so much, man. So I just got done at the Pure Options facility, uh, checking out everything they had going on. Of course. Uh, I see you guys have you know, a big partnership with them. They have a big presence here. We do. We've been pretty much promoting their packaging and their flavors. They have really good genetics, really rare genetics. They have really top of the line flowers. So my team, myself as well, we really like to push the pro grow. We're very knowledgeable and we like to smoke it ourselves, so. Nice. I see you got a nice spread out here for me already. Are any of these uh, some of the archive cuts? We do. We have the Moonbow with the, the number 112 is the Fino. Okay. So that's going to be a deep indica with some do -si dose and some Skittles terps to it. Ooh. Very good flavor in my opinion, coming in about 32% THC, so you can never go wrong with that as well. Uh, well, I see you already got a nice spread set out for me. Are these some of your favorites right now? What, uh, what do we got going on? Absolutely. So other than the Pro Grow, I really like the um, pressure packs myself. The pressure packs are going to be not the highest in THCs, very, very high in terpene profile, very rich in flavor. Um, if you like the runs, the gelato terps, you can never go wrong with the MIA runs. A lot of good pepper terps there. Mac 1, always Classic. a good grapey indica flavor, hybrid. We also have the Sour Bermuda Patch, which is my favorite one out of all of these. Nice. And then we also have the Pure Options pre-rolls, of course. Full gram pre-rolls, you can never go wrong. We got the GG4 and the Moonbow all coming in high THC as well. Sweet, appreciate you, dude. Absolutely, have a good one, brother. Well, cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you for having me to this beautiful right. property. Thanks for coming. Pure options. Pure options. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys. guys. Salud. Gotta hit it. Walk me through your guys' story. How did you come to be in the cannabis industry, be in Michigan, be in Pure Options, all of the above? Uh, I was managing a bar that I was working at while I was in school. You know, through that connection, I knew a few people who were involved with Sam. You know, one of his good childhood buddies who became a pretty close friend of mine passed away. 
sadly. I'm sorry, man. And, um, you know, back in the pre-licensed caregiver sort of gray market, it was hard to trust people with certain stuff. So anyway, it was kind of, uh, I kept sort of pushing, you know? They were talking about needing help and, and needing people and... Trust was a thing and you at least had it, the it, trust. And it for, was, right. you know, and when we sat down to talk about the opportunity, what really, you know, drew me in then, not only having the best bag and the quality of the cannabis, it was really this a feeling of professionalism. Nice. What about you, Ryan? So yeah, I joined the company just about two and a half years ago now. Um, walked in with a s small opportunity um, as a trim job. And I popped around at least six different positions within the company now. Um, I've been a general manager, I wanna say about a year now. I've worked at every location in Lansing, um, getting ready to open up our new flagship store that'll be uh, right outside East Lansing. What about you? Someone for, who is here right now hit me up about the job and I was actually looking for a second job at the time because I had just moved out. So I was like, yeah, sure. I had two different interviews. I had one for a daycare and then one for pure options. And I told my mom and she was like, yeah, you should probably take the daycare one. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I texted her and I was like, yeah, I took the other one. So I started as a butt tender in 2016 uh, and I had I held that position for a while. I was patient and I waited. Eventually I actually became Sam's assistant. And then after that, you know, he's, he's really cool. He's like, what do you want to do? So I kind of got to draw my own path and now I'm the corporate trainer for the company. Kylie, what's, uh, what's your role at Pure Options? Um, so I am a butt tender right now. Um, oh, master butt tender. Master butt tender. Yeah. So I I started um, in the industry 2015, and then I've been working for Pure for two years. When you are able to break away and uh, and not be on the grind, what do you what do you guys do? What do you do for fun around here? <laughs> um, I love traveling personally, so you know any adventure I'm down for. Yeah, I'm very spontaneous, totally. <laughs> so yeah, there's not a lot I won't say no to. Cannabis really has opened up a lot for me in many different areas. Um, I've gotten into, you know, music making and producing and whatnot just for a side, and you know, a lot of that plays together and ties together. You think music makes weed better or weed makes music better? I think that goes hand in hand. You can say <laughs> you're the one and I'll agree yeah. with you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I will say same thing. Live music really is the drug. Yeah. Fish is my favorite band of all time. I think we my shared a little man. bit uh, on that last night. Well, I've been eyeing this garlic breath for a minute. It's fucking gorgeous. Listen, so. once you pop that top off, the smell is gonna be. Yeah. Send it over. Let's you'll, roll up. you'll smell it from across the lake. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, it is so pretty. <laughs> so one of the most confused I've ever been in my entire life. So fish, for you guys who don't know, every Halloween they do a, um, a costume set. So they cover another band, and. In the beginning of the concert, they give out like a fish bill, like a play bill, like they give out on Broadway, explaining what's gonna happen for set two, for, for the costume set. And a few years ago they did, it was like a Swedish yes. alter, like uh, alternative, like space rock band. The story goes in the fish bill that all the records burned down in a warehouse fire. There's no more records of this but that Mike, the bassist, was really into this back in college and they used to listen to it all the time and it was this huge inspiration for them. Um, and so they come out dressed in like all white tuxedos and play this like super fucking weird set. Turns out it was a giant gag. They made up the band, they made it all up. They wrote this whole album in like the two weeks before the set. And the whole set, we're all just like tripping, confused. Some people think it's a gag. Some people think it's real. One guy says he's heard the record before. You oh know, my God. whatever, there, you're arguing the in the bathroom <laughs> line. Nobody's on the fucking same page. And uh, that's amazing. Within about three months, a lot of the songs grew on me, but I was like pretty mad for a little while. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. All of you guys are so cool. Like, it just felt like family from the beginning. But I'm glad you honestly, guys got to get up to Northern Michigan, yeah. man. Yeah. This is really, you know, when, at the least for experience. me, when I think about Michigan, this is, this is what you want to show people. Right. You know?
fucking job, dude. <laughs> Peter, smoke this joint. Here, take this shot. Enjoy nature. Take this kayak out. Come on, eat this steak. Now enjoy nature in the other direction. <laughs> yeah. Look up at the leaves. 